her. We can't get a, let her go like this, Mrs. Higgins. What were we to do? You have no more sense, either of you, than two children. Oh, Mr. Why, Henry, mm -hmm. sir, there's a gentleman downstairs wants to see you very particular. Oh, bother, I can't see anyone now. Who is it? Uh, Mr. Doolittle. Do Doolittle? Do you mean the dustman? Dustman? No, sir, a gentleman. Ah, oh, George, think it's some relative of hers that she's gone to, some, somebody we know nothing about. Or well, send him up quick. Yes, sir. Do you know any of her people? No, well, only her father, this, this fellow we told you about. Mm. Mr. Doolittle. See here, you see this? Oh. You've done this. Done what, man? Well, this, I'll tell you. Look at it. Look at this hat. Look at this coat. Has Eliza been buying you clothes? Eliza? Not she, not off. Why would she buy me clothes? Good morning, Mr. Doolittle. Won't you sit down? Asking your pardon, ma'am. <laughs> I'm that full of what's happened to me, I can't think of nothing else. Mm, what the dickens has happened to you? I wouldn't mind if it had only happened to me. Anything might happen to anybody and nobody to blame for providence. But this is something that you've done to me. Yes, you. Henry Higgins. <laughs> Have you found Eliza? That's the point. Have you lost her? Yes. <laughs> Blimey, you have all the luck, you do. <laughs> now I ain't found her. She found me quick enough after what you've done to me. But what has my son done to you, Mr. Doolittle? Done to me? He's ruined me. He's destroyed my happiness. Tied me up and delivered me in the hands of middle-class morality. You're raving. You're mad. You're, you're drunk. I gave you five pounds. After that, I had two conversations with you at half a crown an hour, and I haven't seen you since. Drunk am I? Mad am I? Will you tell me this? Did you, or did you not, write a letter to an old blighter in America what was giving five millions to found moral reform societies all over the world, and what wanted you to invent a universal language for him? Well, Ezra D. Wonnefer. He's dead. Yes, he's dead, and I am done for. Now, did you write in this letter that the most original moralist at present in England was Alfred Doolittle, a common dustman? Yes, and after your last visit, I remember making some silly joke of that yeah, kind. Yeah. You might call it a silly joke, but it's put the lid on me right enough. Look, it just gave him the chance he wanted to show that Americans is not like us, that they recognise and respect merit, in all class of life, however rumble. Them words is in his blooming will, in which, Henry Higgins, thanks to your silly joking, he leaves me a share in his pre-digested cheese trust worth 3,000 a year, on condition that I lecture to his Wonderfella Moral Reform World League as often as they ask up to six times a year. Oh, what a lark! <laughs> You're under a safe thing there, Doolittle. They won't ask you twice. It ain't a lecture in our mind. I'll lecture him blue in the face, I will, and not turn a hair. It's the making a gentleman of me that I object to. Who asked him to make a gentleman of me? I was happy, I was free. Now I'm warranted, tied neck and heels. And everyone touches me for money. <laughs> a year ago, I had no relative in the world, apart from two or three what wouldn't talk to me. Now I'm 50, and not a decent week's wages amongst a lot of them. I have to live my life for others and not for myself. That's middle class morality. You talk of losing Liza, I bet she's on my doorstep by this. And the next one that touched me will be you, Emery Higgins. I'll have to learn to speak middle class language instead of talking proper English. <laughs> that's where you're coming, and I dare say that's what you've done it for. But, my dear Mr. Doolittle, nobody can force you to accept this bequest. You can repudiate it. Isn't that so, Colonel Pickering? I believe so. That's the tragedy of it, ma'am. It's easy to say, chuck it, but I ain't the nerve. Which one of us has? I mean, what is it for me if I chuck it? But the workhouse in me old age, and this blooming 3,000 a year, shoves me in the middle classes. And I ain't the nerve for the workhouse. Intimidated, that's what I am. Bought up and broke. That is what your son has brought me to. Well, I'm very glad that you're not going to do anything foolish, Mr. Doolittle. For this solves the problem of Eliza's future. 
You can provide for her now. Yes, ma'am. I'm expected to provide for everyone now out of 3,000 a year. <laughs> Nonsense! He can't provide for her. He shan't provide for her. She doesn't belong to him. I paid him five pounds for her. Too little. <laughs> Either you're an honest man or a rogue. Little of both, Emery. Like the rest of us, a little of both. Well, you took that money for the girl. You have no right to take her as well. Oh, Henry, don't be absurd. If you really want to know where Eliza is, she's upstairs. Upstairs? Well, then I shall jolly soon fetch her downstairs. Be quiet, Henry, and sit down. I... Sit down, dear, and listen to me. But I think you might have told me this half an hour ago. <clears throat> Eliza came to see me this morning. She told me of the brutal way you two had...